Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Marvin Hunter Speaks. And today we will be covering gerrymandering. First, I'd like to ask a question. Why is it in the longest running democracy in the world is voting so hard? It shouldn't be. One of the problems is gerrymandering. Well, what's gerrymandering? Gerrymandering is the redrawing of district lines in a state to serve the purpose of one party or another party. Whichever party is in power at the time in that state, that is the party who has control of the pen gerrymandering should be illegal and it does detriment to the voting process and the confidence of the voting system okay in every state you have representatives and you have senators your representatives depend on the population of your state but your senators are two every state no matter what the size is no matter how big no matter how small you only get two senators this is the way the founders wrote it out to balance everything out so that a larger state won't be able to bully a smaller state in a perfect world every state should be divided up into republicans and democrats equally like say if a state had 12 districts in a fair world they should have five republicans five democrats and then two moderates that's in a fair world but it's not fair because what happens is people go to drawing lines all over the place to benefit their particular party. This is what gerrymandering is. And since the Supreme Court knocked down the Voting Rights Act in 2013, states don't have to give permission from the federal government to redraw the lines. And what happens when the cat's away? The mice will play. And before then, Republicans get their panties in a bunch, I do understand that Democrats do gerrymandering too when they're in power. However, when they were in power before, the Voting Rights Act was in place and it had to be reported. There was oversight. But now the inmates are running the asylum. And the weird thing with Democrats is they tend to gerrymander themselves in a way. In every state, you have urban areas, you have rural areas. Most of your urban areas, your cities, are going to be populated by Democrats. It's pretty much that way everywhere. Democrats are going to stack into urban areas. Liberals are going to stack into the cities. The cities might be inside two districts, one, two districts in the whole state. So their voting power is limited. You got most of the people here, but see, they only have served, they only have voting rights within that district. They're limited if you have a bunch of other districts that are rural. Rural districts tend to be white. White people tend to be conservative. So no, that's so where you think everything is leaning because of the density and population the democratic districts win in a landslide but the republican districts always win by a slim margin but a win is a win and if most of the states are rural white and conservative they'll overpower the limited urban districts and that's how your state turns red that's not to say that voting doesn't count and i know and i know a lot of people will run with that and say voting doesn't count the system counts on everybody not voting a third of the population pretty much doesn't vote all the time they count on that if everybody voted and was aware and participated it would stop a lot of this stuff because there are certain states that have demanded that they stop gerrymandering but that's the citizens rising up but to rise up you got to know what's happening and that means you have to be involved and that means you have to vote so you see what i'm saying so on and so forth but the way it is now everybody that votes counts but if some people vote counts a little bit more than others. Now take the senators. The senator situation, you get two senators per state, but your larger states tend to be more diverse in, in their racial makeup, right? But it's only a few larger states. Most states are not large. Those states tend to be more white. Again, more white people tend to be conservative. So in the Senate, most of the power is conservative. 
This, this is why Mitch McConnell is a lunatic with no boundaries. They do what they want to do. This is why Mitch McConnell was so bold in saying that as soon as Barack Obama got elected, he said he's going to, he, it was his job to make sure that Barack Obama was a one term president. Seemed like the election of Barack Obama, the first black president in this country, angered some so much it sparked a partisan divide that was tangible. You could taste it. You could cut, you could cut the tension with a knife. That's why in 2013, they did away with the Voting Rights Act. And you say, how is that possible? How is that possible that the Supreme Court would strike down something that has been re-signed by every president, including Republican presidents, since the beginning? Hey, the Electoral College is flawed for sure. And some people might say, I don't, I don't have the answers. I know it needs to be overhauled. Many people say we need to go to a popular vote. I don't know if that's the answer either, but I doubt it. I'm going to tell you why. The reason I don't think that a straight across the board popular vote will work is because what will happen is the little guy will always get outvoted. And what's his motivation to even participate if he can never win? I put it to you like this. Two wolves and a sheep trying to decide what they're going to have for lunch. That sheep going to always lose. No matter what, either they, the wolves are going to say we're going to eat some meat and the sheep don't eat meat or the sheep is going to be lunch. So the sheep has no chance of ever winning. Or I'll put it to you like this, say you're in a high school class reunion and, and, and say a small portion of your class, say 10 percent of your class enjoys the blues. But the rest of the class likes soft rock. And so they keep taking a vote on it. What kind of music are we going to play during the class reunion? We're going to play soft rock. And if they are voting, well, that's 10 percent that's 10 of the people who want to hear blues. When do you think you're going to ever hear blues? Never. Because everybody's going to always go with soft rock because that's what the majority want to hear. So what's the point of the people who like blues eat to even show up to the class reunion if none of their requests are being met? You see what I'm saying? So that's that's the danger of the popular vote. And I, I don't know this for sure, but that's just this is how I just don't think it, it will work. I mean, the electoral college will actually work, but it's predicated on participation. Just like any other system in America. A lot of broken systems in America actually work if everybody did what they're supposed to do. But the cavalier nature of Americans, we're not going to do it. You don't tell me what to do. I'm the master of my own destiny. I'm not. I want you crazy. I'm not. You know, that's just the nature of Americans. But most things, if everybody actually participated and, and the oversight of those programs worked the way it's supposed to, shit would run more smoother. But it, that's not the nature of America. Why well, I always say I'm, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for oversight because if history has taught us nothing else, is that people, when they're left to their own devices, will shit the bed every single time. You, 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 you can jump up and down and say, I control me and I know what's best for me, da 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 But when left to your own devices, you knowing what's best for you usually hinders your neighbor. It might benefit you and yours, but it fucks over your neighbor to your right or your left. And somebody has to be there to smack your hand. Hey, It's hey. a shame, but that is how it is. People, when they left to their own devices, are children. It is a proven fact. You want to see something go to shit? Don't watch it. Historically, a third of Americans never vote. It's been that way for a while. Probably worse now because people have no trust in the system. And the system is flawed. But it would work if everybody get involved. From the, from the bottom up. From your alderman to the president of the United States. When you deal with the presidential election, you have red states, you have blue states. And then you have swing states. You know, battleground states, all this type of stuff. Battleground states are usually states that can go either way. Their representatives are kind of even. They can inch one way or the other. In one way or the other, they can inch it. So that's why you see places like Michigan, or places like that, you know, where uh, candidates visit multiple times because they have to pay attention to it. That's where Hillary messed up. She ignored a couple of swing, uh, swing states or battleground states, and it ended up biting her in the ass. But check this out. For the first time in history, we have a president that most Americans did not want, who has appointed three Supreme Court justices who will affect our lives for the rest of their lives. Remember the Voting Rights Act? Elections have consequences, and those justices affect the vote. The Supreme Court has greenlit gerrymandering. The Supreme Court has greenlit 
unlimited contributions to campaigns by corporate entities. And so you wonder why Trump has made no effort. Seemed like the first time in history he's the first president that has made little to no effort to reach across the aisle, to unite the nation. Because for the first time in history, he doesn't have to. All he has to do is play to his base. And that's why, that's why I tell people Trump may win again. It's very, 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 very possible that he will win again. All he has to do is play to his base because his base is in power. So we all over the place. And that's why I say that uh, Democrats usually don't have the cojones. They're usually wussies. But if Joe Biden gets in the office, he absolutely should stack that court. And he should make Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico a state to help balance out that Senate situation. Because, because D.C. is very diverse. And Puerto Rico is non-white. It's mostly non-white. So that will help balance this thing out. If you agree, make a comment. If you don't agree, make a comment. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings, whatever you say. Just help the our algorithm. But uh, make sure you go subscribe, man. Go hit that subscribe button and I appreciate you tuning in. And, uh, and this has been your boy Marvin Hunter, man. Marvin Hunter Speaks, AKA the Grumpy Uncle, AKA one of the unmanageable Negroes. Peace.